So for my upbringing, um, when I started in a manufacturing setting was in high school, I took a couple classes and that's when I learned about it. And I really did fall in love with it. And I thought about pursuing it. And at the time that just didn't really work out. And so I ended up going to college and I got um, automotive degree and I was working at Mercedes Benz. And then I was working there for about five years and then eventually COVID hit and they started letting people go. And I was one that got let go kind of right before it all started kicking off. And I thought about the MA program from one of my friends who went through it. And he told me um, how fun it is, how much just like the classes from high school it was. So I figured I'd look into that. I don't think it was so much what skills specifically. I think it was more just being able to make things. And with that, sure, I could have gone into woodworking, but it's not really as fun as making things out of metal, which I thought was really cool. So how my knowledge grew uh, from my first day until I graduated was I went from a general understanding of how a lot of the tooling and a lot of the cutters were. And I went from there to actually being able to apply that in practice at a job. Has it changed? Yes and no, because um, no, because I knew you could always make some crazy things uh, being a machinist. Well, anything from like car engines to rocket ships. Uh, yes, it has changed because I had no idea how much work and how much planning went into all that. As far as planning goes, um, it's it blows my mind how much um, goes into it from even the machinist at that point in time for the part or the whole project is you've got to study the blueprints, got to do all the math, got to figure out how to set it up in a machine, got to figure out what cutter is the right cutter to use. And even just at that small step in the grand scheme of things is a lot more than I had anticipated. I learned Again, how to read dial indicators. I had learned in high school and then over the however many years since then I forgot. But through the Manufacturing Academy, I relearned how to use them, which was great because I use them practically every day at work. Uh, it's not, it's kind of like riding a bike now. I don't think I'm ever going to forget. And as far as math, um, that as well, every day. Uh, you, on the engine lathe, you're always doing math, it's simple math mostly, but every now and again, you'll have to do some trigonometry. A skill that I remember that definitely challenged me was reading vernier skills. That is something I hadn't done before and looking at it at first, it's very intimidating. You're like, what are all these lines? What's going on? But just with everything in life, just practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the more you understand it. Um, along with that was complex math. Uh, I, for one, hate math. I was never good at it in high school and still kind of a challenge for me now. But now that I'm applying it to what I'm doing for work, it has a purpose. And because in high school, I was like, oh, I'm never going to need this. I'm, do I need to know it? But now that I have a job that requires, uh, that requires math and not always just easy math, like adding, subtracting, whatnot, I got to figure it out and got to get it down. The process at least for me, as the MA program was coming to an end, was I basically just applied to jobs. It's nothing more than that. I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and I had an idea of who I wanted to work for. So it was just 
applying to jobs, which I had already been doing basically for like the last six, seven months beforehand. What I was looking for in terms of what I wanted to do as a machinist, it was my main focus was aerospace. At the time I was thinking Blue Origin was my main focus. So I was thinking them, uh, maybe Boeing, and I even applied to SpaceX. Uh, my secondary option, if that didn't work out, was um, weapons manufacturing, like a company like Aero Precision down in Tacoma. That would have been interesting. Um, I always loved to work around stuff like that, and I ended up building one myself and being able to make one sounded interesting to me. The process for Blue Origin was basically, uh, since MA was coming to an end, I basically just applied to jobs. I actually ended up applying to eight or nine different positions. And then I ended up landing on apprentice machinists because luckily, uh, it was announced like the last week of our classes for the pre-apprenticeship that Blue Origin is now a sponsor of the AJAC program. So I think timing wise, I got extremely lucky and I applied for, I think two different positions around where that would help. And I ended up landing uh, the apprenticeship machinist. Um, so what I leveraged in the interview was um, pretty heavy leaning on what I did beforehand was a uh, technician for Mercedes Benz. Um, I, in my eight or nine different positions that I have applied to, I've interviewed a few times and it seems like, yes, they usually go for automotive backgrounds, which I thought was interesting. So I used that and I was able to kind of give examples on how what I did there would somewhat um, apply to what I'm doing now. Some soft skills I took home and I most improved on would be, I guess, communication and creative thinking. Communication, because you've got to be able to talk to the people around you uh to get ideas and direction on what to do next and how to set up everything and all that and then creative thinking is you gotta start thinking outside the box if you need something to get dialed into a machine or something you got to think of any way possible to get it in there or if you've got to measure a uh, dimension in a very awkward spot you got to figure it out you got to figure out how to get in there a uh, couple of other soft skills would be uh, staying off your phone at work. That's definitely a pretty big one. It's really not hard to do for me since what I do is extremely interesting and it takes up all of my day basically. Uh, as well as being a team player, is you got to be able, you got to be willing to help out if anyone needs help, and that's anything from just moving a heavy part or helping them set it up in a machine or helping them figure out how to measure something in a complicated spot. So Blue Origin is an aerospace manufacturer founded by Jeff Bezos, also the founder of Amazon. And we mostly manufacture rockets. And to expand on that, specifically is for space exploration. Our mission goal is millions of people living and working in space. So we're continuing to develop technologies for our reusable rockets to make it cheaper so we can actually obtain that goal. Working at Blue Origin, uh, my first day was mostly just onboarding. It's just kind of getting to know the area, getting to see the building where I'd be working. And that was actually my first time in the shop and really my first time in an actual uh, manufacturing shop. I don't really count the one from high school because that was like three machines and a lathe. Um, 
but after that it was first week I was getting more settled in and I was able to start branching out from where I was centered and just kind of started exploring the building because it'd be pretty easy to get lost in there so a lot of time was kind of uh being shown around like this is where this is this is where you are on all that um and then you started seeing uh rocket components everywhere and it's incredible even six months later where i am now is i see a rocket engine or a rocket itself and it's insane it just takes me back and i'm always reminded of why i'm there from seeing all that years down the road what i take away from all this is um I fully believe that I wouldn't have the job I have today without the Manufacturing Academy. Uh, they've taught me a lot of stuff within the pre-apprenticeship that I was able to bring into Blue Origin to further practice on. And yeah, down the road, I'll never forget that I fully believe Manufacturing Academy got me to where I am then. Uh, some advice I would give would be take great notes, basically write down everything you can, everything you think is going to be useful, even maybe some stuff you don't think will be useful. Maybe it will be in the future. Maybe you'll have to deal with something like that. Uh, for example, I never thought I'd have to deal with bolt patterns. Uh, I was wrong. So uh, good thing I took notes on that. Um Practice reading dial calipers and micrometers uh, as much as you can. Basically, what I did is I have a cheap set of calipers. I just ran around my house and started measuring things. That was mostly out of boredom. Thank you, COVID. Uh, but other than that, it just practice as much as you can because every day, I use that every day. There is not a single day I don't use them. Um, also, learning to read linear scales. That isn't quite every day for me, but it's helpful to know because we do have tools in the shop that use vernier scales and I need to know how to use those. Um, and basically just be an information sponge. Just soak up as much information as you can, um, whether that's just remembering stuff or writing it down or applying it into practice and applying it into a job. Where I'm at now is I am currently in my second quarter for the apprenticeship program. I started work at Blue Origin back in August. And um, since it was so new, being a sponsor of the AJAC program, they're still trying to figure out everything and starting to get classes ready for Blue Origin and whatnot. Uh, so I did my first quarter in fall of 2020. I finished that out in December, and then now I'm, like I said, currently doing my second one, and I've got many more to go, and I look forward to it. So the first quarter I took was print reading for industry. Uh, we went through that, and that was just uh, like it sounds like blueprint reading. I passed that class and now I'm currently in um, shop math. Uh, not my strongest subject, but I'm learning a lot. I'm actually learning more formulas I didn't know before, or at the very least forgot from high school or when I was in college. And I'm just going through that right now. So at work, I'm working under one of the technicians there. And what they have us doing is a lot of projects, getting used to our, uh, manual lathe and manual um, mills. So a lot of what I do there is kind of more focused on what's going on at that point. And um, sometimes when I'm learning in classes, uh, actually mesh together 
from what I'm doing at work to what I'm learning in class. I don't try and seek out, hey, this is what I'm working on in class. Can we try and move this onto a machine? It's more just a natural coming together um, for a couple of reasons. One, I don't really feel the need to kind of seek that out. It might just ruin projects and I could see myself working on like eight different projects at a time, um, which could be normal. But as far as me learning um, from ground up, that's not something that I feel comfortable with. And another reason is I tend to learn better and I tend to remember if it just comes up because I'll be like, oh, hey, I'm learning that in class right now. I can do it this way or maybe this way. And the, oh, I figured it out. I can do it this way. And that's kind of how I learn is just a natural thing like that, as far as tying what I'm learning in class to what I'm learning at work. Uh, I would like to thank Ajax as a whole. I mean, without, like I said before, without this program, I wouldn't be working where I am now. Um, I would also like to thank Troy Ironmonger for being my instructor for the pre-apprenticeship. That was such a blast. I had so much fun doing that. And he was able to help me understand things if I ever had questions. My experience through all of this is not really typical considering everything is now online and all that nonsense. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of this program. Uh, like I, I keep saying it and I'll never stop saying it is I will never have the job I have now without AJAC program. So if you're thinking about getting into the AJAC apprenticeship, I would say do it. It's completely worth it. If you have what you wanna do in mind and you work hard to get there, you will not regret it.